Hey, what's going on? Welcome to the Jess Marshall Podcast. This week I get to have my buddy Matt Frugge on. He is also a contractor. He's the owner of Roofmark Construction as well as a new technology company called X Squared. He's the CEO of that. We're going to talk about that tech startup. We're going to talk about all the challenges of entrepreneurship, but also about the importance of living a DIY life and living without fear. I hope you enjoy the podcast, and I think you will. Insurance <laughs> forefathers had actually... <laughs> The, the actuary, yeah, I the like insurance that. forefathers <laughs> were best friends with the actuaries at the down at the pub. <laughs> they started getting lit up and were like, you know, we could fucking crush it if an insurance was born. That's how I see it. Probably, you need to go on like, uh, you need to take like a, a ayahuasca journey and go <laughs> back in time and yeah. like. It'll transport you right into the pub, so you can like listen to what they're. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Yeah. Um. Yeah, there's no telling how it came about. You're probably you're probably more accurate than me thinking it was born out of <laughs> your <your're>, benevolence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're living in a dream world. Yeah. I'm a I'm a uh I decide to be an optimist. Yeah. But I'm a hundred percent through and through a pessimist. Yeah. So it's all coming in through pessimist lens, and then I'm like, okay, reframe, say it back. <laughs> Super positive, bro. Tony yeah. Robbins, that shit. But no, they were fucking looking to screw people over from day one, man. Just, I was just having this conversation with one of my business partners, and uh, I was like, yeah, you know, typically when people start talking, like, oh, actually, I don't remember what we were talking about, but I was saying that, like, I'm usually optimistic until a certain point and Ugh. then I get real skeptical. He's like, oh, man, I'm the opposite. Straight off. I'm super skeptical, and then, like, when something works out, I'm like, oh. What I miss? <laughs> I, feel, I feel like maybe when I was younger, I was I always expected the best. Yeah. And then I was disappointed, like nine times out of ten. Yeah. Now I'm like, oh, this is for sure gonna. This is not gonna work. Yeah. But we're gonna go hard at it. Then if it does work, I'm like, okay, right on. Yeah. And then we're on to the next <laughs> exact same, like rinse and repeat. I don't know, man. I'm delusionally optimistic, right? Like I feel like it's uh it's a character trait that's kind of got me where uh am of well like, it's probably why you tackled this massive project probably which we will talk about later yo swite should we talk about some current events first producer swite over there in the back room i can't even see him y'all he's just yeah, back there yeah. Ooh, oh yeah the voice and the voice oh man that's creepy <laughs> that's right <laughs> it's real I forgot sexy. you were there <laughs> yeah he scared the shit out of the last guest <laughs> that's awesome Okay. Biden laptop doesn't even exist. <laughs> Is that the, uh, did you see that this morning that, that they say that there's irrefutable proof that tax evasion a hundred percent happened and, no. he, and that he's indictable. Hunter is. Yeah. Good. But I don't watch the news. <laughs> so whenever either. like a P we talked about this when we met up the other yeah. when a piece of news gets through to me, I'm like, I don't know even what source I got that from. So now I'm saying it as though it's true and I have no idea. Have you been following the GameStop saga? So sort of. That's the Robin Hood thing, right? Yeah. Break that down. So like for an idiot. Okay. So me. you understand how short selling works? Yes. Right. Okay. So I watch billions, bro. Come okay. on. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, you know, a bunch of hedge, fund, hedge funds, basically, like, half of Wall Street shorted the shit out of GameStop. Okay, um, yeah. I think it was going into 2019, right? They started shorting it, shorting yeah. it, just driving it out of business, right? And then this guy named Ryan Cohen, the founder and uh, former CEO of Chewy, the pet brand. Um, they we got they got their buildings right next door. Did you yeah, see that? Yeah, he sold it for, like, $3 billion or something. Wow. He's a billionaire, right? So. He got on the board, got involved somehow, and started turning it around. But there was just massive short positions against GameStop, right? And when all this kind of popped off back in January of 21, last year, um, it was like at 140% short interest. And if you understand wow. what short interest is, like yeah. how can something be shorted 40% more than the shares that exist, right? Yeah. So it started uncovering like – how fraudulent our market really is. And oh, no way. No way. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Sorry. Seems odd. <laughs> the da, matrix da, da. is flawed, what right? And so, seriously. Yeah. So, uh, it's just been a really interesting uh, thing to watch from an insider, not an insider, I don't have inside information, right? But like from the Reddit 
community's yeah. perspective because these fools like i don't know if you ever uh saw that show what is it don't don't fuck with cats or whatever on netflix like showed the power of the internet right basically yeah. the hive mind oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 the uh where they all those people got together and found the... figured out this dude that tortured a cat yes right yes, yes. Like, that's a that's an incredible it's doc. like so the hive mind phenomenon that takes place on reddit uh, has uncovered now. Granted, there's a lot of crazy shit on there, right? There there's is a lot of stupid tinfoil hat, weird. like yeah, for sure. oh, he did this, and it means that's shut it's not as bad as four like, chan, but it's cray. Yeah, it's uh, it's one degree shy of it, right? So yeah, just a little more sane than four chan. But they've done an incredible amount of research, and like, there's some really brilliant minds in there that have done an incredible amount of research that has actually uncovered. That's the awesome. mechanics behind the fraudulent market that we live in. And so just following that story along, it's been I've been able to actually see for the first time with something that I'm actually paying attention to, the level that the mainstream media will go to to spin, deflect, obfuscate, whatever word you want to use, manipulate the truth into whatever the check that's right in there, you know, it, whatever they want and it's crazy the and new, so the news is entertainment it is they're man. there and they're owned by very wealthy conglomerates or individuals yeah. who are selling ad space and then all the old timers are like oh yeah I'm just gonna settle in here and watch the nightly and figure out what's going on in the world and it's crazy man it's crazy that like now i'm like so jaded more so than ever before Good for you me because too. like every time i see a news story i'm like what filter is this through you know and like even ones that align with like how i feel like i read it with a super just like this is bullshit mindset you know? And I think you should, and I'm glad to hear that you do, even though you're like an undying optimist, because it's <laughs> bullshit. I was, I was telling some friends uh, a couple weeks ago, I was like, back in the day when I was growing up, all preachers, they were white as the driven snow. Yeah. They were all to be trusted. Yeah. You could never say a bad word about them. And then the Swaggerts and the, the Tammy Faye and Jim Bakers and a whole laundry list of these morons for doing immoral shit yeah they're humans of course they did but also then all the financial just improprieties of even local idiots like yeah. tilton yeah and that knucklehead that's out there in fort worth uh kenneth copeland yeah it's just like whatever okay preachers can't really trust them grain of salt whatever then it was uh politicians man they got the bet i mean when i was little you know reagan right now you're like, nah, nah. get them all out. Both yeah. sides, all of them. And blockchain. There should be ter- <laughs> <laughs> blockchain politics would kick. But like, there should be term limits on uh, legislate, le- legislator terms as well. Not just executive. In my opinion, Supreme Court, you get four years, you're out. Yeah. Not a lifetime deal on that. That's a weird. That's a weird thing. So politicians, no dice. And now for me, it's everyone in the medical community. Yeah. So I'm not just talking about what happened in February, March 2020. Yeah. I'm talking about like, tell me when you were growing up playing sports, your strength and conditioning coach in, in high school, what did he tell you about doing squats? What was one thing, two things, right? Keep your back. But what about your knees? Never let them go past 90. Right. And now that's been proven to be total bullshit. And right. that knees, knees over toes guy is out saving people from drug addiction from operations and yeah. having to spend all that because he's like no you got to go past that so the level of misinformation the level of just ooh, i learned it in college so it must be a hundred percent gospel now yeah, bro i actually uh was in the healthcare industry i don't know if we talked about that we did for day. a minute yeah, i was in medical sales for a little bit uh um, crushing it we did do by well. all accounts <laughs> we did do well but uh, it was really eye opening because my mom was oh, a nurse. My mom was a nurse for forty years, so I had a lot of respect for the medical community, a lot of respect for doctors and nurses and researchers. And um, little did you know, little did I know, <laughs> <laughs> it's all driven by money, man. Bro. It's all driven by money. I mean, it, like we didn't know what we were doing. Like we were young, right? We were just yeah. like business minded, right? And Healthcare is one of those industries, you know, it's regulated for a reason because people's lives are at stake and, you know, you need some some rules in place, some checks and balances. But, um, you know, we were going into it from a business mind like, okay, we have this product. We get paid a commission to sell it. How can we sell as much of this product as possible? Right. Right. So we were pulling out all the stops. We were 
doing mass mailings. We were doing fax blasts. I mean, it was just just pull out all the stops. Fax machines. Yeah. Now you're dating the shit out of yourself. I'm bro. telling you, man. And like, I didn't realize. Yeah. Well, we won't go into that. <laughs> that you're not really supposed to do that, right? Yeah. And we didn't know. We were just like, whatever. Hustling. But like, you know, we put out a very compelling message. And these doctors would just respond in droves. And we were like, wow. That was way too easy, right? Like we didn't think it was gonna. We didn't think we were gonna have that response, and like it was all about the money. It was, they didn't give two shits, and like it really jaded me. Like trying to find a you know primary care doctor, you know people, you know doctors you go to see, um, they're all driven by money. And you know there's been laws that have come come along to try and you know used to you could take doctors on trips and buy them cars and right. boats and whatever you yeah. wanted. Now yeah. you can't yeah. even buy a lollipop without giving a receipt and like yeah. documenting it somewhere. And, um, but yeah, it's, it's all... like recruiting a college football player. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Can't even buy him a cheeseburger. Yeah. You'll get going exactly. probation or whatever. Yeah. Swipe. Was... What is this one about our, uh, about our, our girl texting her boyfriend to kill himself? Yes. Mich- Michelle Carter. Um, what are you doing, Michelle? Her boyfriend in 2020 to kill herself. Ended up committing suicide. Um, earlier this uh, in March, they released a trailer and a lot of backlash coming from it. People are saying that it's kind of glorifying the act, and people that are making all these horrendous crimes shouldn't be getting a TV show. What's your guys take on that? Uh, is this the trailer? Yeah, let's go take a look. Yeah. Conrad's dead. Who's Conrad? Who's Conrad? Michelle Carter, 17 year old girl. Text her friends for three days telling them her boyfriend's missing, but this girl knew he wasn't missing. She was in contact with him the whole time. Right up until he killed himself. Just texts. Do respect. Damn, damn. Those are messed up texts. I think she was telling him to do it. Messed up's one word for it. Should do it tonight. God. I keep finding things out about him. It's like I didn't even know him. It means so much to see you all here for Conrad. It's strange that someone so close to him we never met. What do you think dying is like? Just like floating on water. They've opened an investigation into your connection with the death of Conrad Roy. But I didn't do anything wrong. There are text messages. Thousands of them. Go on, say it. He was living with you when it happened. You think I don't think about it every goddamn night? We should be like Romeo and Juliet. I'd love to be your Juliet. But you do know what happened in the end. Is this his first suicide attempt? No. This kid has a history of depression. How's this girl responsible this time? against assisted suicide in this state. She told him to drink bleach. All he thought about was dying. He really just wanted to help him. If we tried this, it would be precedent setting. Lynn, do you believe Michelle Carter murdered your son? I'm stuck. Tell me what to do. What motive could she possibly have? Miss Carter will not be tested. This is a long ass trailer. It is. What the fuck? Oh, that's uh i don't know man kids got history of depression and then she i mean teenagers are very suggestible yeah i don't know i mean that's matt if i texted you told maybe you, in the future we will that i was gonna drink bleach what would you, what would you say back to me bro scented or unscented <laughs> <laughs> yeah. not to make light of a very serious no, I'm kidding. situation I'm kidding. I'm kidding. i uh yeah, I don't know. How? Hey, Swipe, how long was she in jail prison? A minute, I think. Yeah, so she actually served 15 months. She actually got out early on good behavior. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of dynamics at play there. I mean, I mean if she was incarcerated in California, they would have let her out two years ago before she even before went she in. Even went in. I, mean, I mean, time served. I mean, you know. are you into crime and committing it? <laughs> Come here. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's that's a tough situation, but uh, I, I mean, obviously she was held accountable for it. Um, she was. I don't even know. I mean, you've got kiddos. I don't yet, but I mean, what do you do? You put like a clone on your kid's phone so you can see who they're messaging and shit? Because like, how do you even like that's very disconcerting thinking about bringing a kid into this yeah. weird world, yeah. except that then when you think, no, I'm not going to live a, a life of fear. I'm going to raise them up the way I was raised or better. And we're going to fucking make, we're going to help change yeah. this thing. Yeah. I think, uh, I think that's the parental approach, right? The, um, is trying to make sure your kids understand like, you know, cause they're going to make mistakes, right? My daughter, like my, our 15 year old is, um, uh, like the best kid ever, right? That's awesome. She gets straight. She's gotten straight A's since she's been in school, right? Um, she just does her, what she's supposed to do, right? She's like the easiest kid ever, right? Like the opposite of me at fifteen. Oh, the op- total opposite <laughs> of me. Like I was scared. I was really scared. And you know, we're not out of the woods yet, but yeah, uh, she's got a great head on her. You had her knock but, on wood, man. Yeah, for, for real. real. Um, but you know, a few years ago, a couple of years ago, um, she was, you know, her and her friends were on TikTok and whatever else uh social media doing the dances and doing all the things that kids do that seem innocent right but like they can take a very different turn with maybe out them even realizing it right and um you know we got wind of it and and saw it and you know nicks that shit in the bud and it was one of those things that like i don't think kids until they're close to being an adult need to have that type of access to the world right i mean it's our job as parents to protect them teach them right guide them along the way and it's hard enough to do without cell phones and without the internet you know you add that external influence that's coming in right behind you right as you shut the door right and it's like it's a losing battle so anyway we had to make the decision to kind of like strip it away from her uh for the time being she still has her phone or whatever we don't we don't do the the um you know, the spyware or whatever, where yeah. we you know, look at her text or whatever. But if we, we do spot check sometimes and we're like, you know, let me see your phone. Yeah. Um, but it's one of those things that like, you know, what are you going to, you're going to buckle their seatbelt every time they get in the car for them. Like yeah. at a certain point you can just got to like, you know, this is a, a, you know, sovereign human being. Like yeah. they're going to make their own decisions right. about certain things, yeah. even as they're growing up. But um, yeah, you can't even compare it to the way we were raised because, None of this shit was even a twinkle in, you know, the biggest tech guy's I mean, eyes. I had back to push then. the button three times to get to, you know, V or W. Yeah, you know, like, exactly. Old Nokia's, right? You're exactly. Like, this is taking forever. Well, Who hell, there weren't even cell phones till like ninety seven ish, seven eight nine, when they were the bag that. phone that you plug into your cigarette lighter. My dad had one of those. Yeah, I mean, I was a contractor before that too, and I was just, I would go to a payphone. Hey, I'll be there in one hour. Drive, <laughs> yeah. meet them, hope that they were still there. Go to another payphone. Hey, I'll be there in twenty. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I remember being in the Navy, like when I was stationed in Pensacola. Like we had to take cabs everywhere. Right? Yeah, and we didn't have cell phones. I mean, they existed, but it's like nobody had one, right? right? And uh, yeah, we'd have to like go to a fucking payphone or like go up to the the desk in the barracks and like call a cab. And it was just weird, different times. Yeah, raising kids, man. Uh, I have six nephews. I can't even imagine the just the craziness that, that the next 20 years will. It's always something. And we, yeah. you know, we have 15, 9, and 2. Yeah, you're uh, you're in for it. Yeah, we just we just started the clock all over. Well, what's very disturbing, too, we think we have a new Supreme Court justice. Was she confirmed? I don't know. I don't know. Again, news. I don't, I don't pay attention. Miss me with that. It's all noise. But her stance on pedophilia... And all of that is very disturbing because she's like, well, they don't deserve a full sentence because they committed this many crimes, but it was online and you have way more access, way faster. So really, it wasn't like 200 offenses. I'm just going to judge them on one. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. If there's anything that I don't think we should be soft on, it's that. Yeah. I like. Th- I think weed should be legal. I think the war on drugs is dumb as hell. I mean, there's a lot of things that are just like, come, come on. on. We still that, talking about that? <laughs> but yeah. No, that pedophilia? though, no. bro. No. And uh, that's a hard. That's a hard stop. Well, like Cain uh, Velasquez, you you molest my four year old niece, and I mean, I'm surprised. You've sea fighter heavy heavyweight Cain Velasquez. Some mm-hmm. some dude. I think it was. 
a member of his extended family, he finds out they're messing with one of his nieces and he goes and kills a, shoots a guy. And I mean, I mean, can't blame him. If a judge is telling me from the bench that what happened to my kids, no biggie, because it happened through the internet, yeah. when they're telling us that in like five years, everyone's just going to be living in the metaverse. Right. Like, get with the times, judge. Yeah. <laughs> bro. Yeah. Or you're about to have anarchy on your hands out here. Yeah, man, that's crazy. Uh, I mean, yeah, just I don't understand how anybody can have a soft position on that that type of crime. I mean, like Seems that's like the easiest topic to have a tough position on. I mean, yeah, at, at that point, like you got to start questioning society as a whole, and which I mean, that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll we'll be here here till tomorrow afternoon. Yeah. And you, you'll miss your Zoom call, and and your wife will be pissed. So yeah. we'll stay away. It's just nuts. It's crazy. I don't even. I uh, feel like we're living in the cartoon world right now. Yeah, and you I, know, I wonder. Like, I was talking to a buddy of mine about this the other day. Like. Ah, does this happen to every generation, right? Because every generation goes through like major macro changes in how things are done and, you know, what social, like Not what these social ones, norms. Though. But like these are like so like devalued and de- divorced from like conservative values that our country yeah. was founded on that it's just like, are we literally heading to like the edge here? Like YouTube might take this video down just because you said that well, conservative fuck. values that uh, our country was founded on. Well, it's that, but it's all, so that's very disturbing. This weird alternate morality, and I don't yeah. even know, you know, you, you're born this way, but you think you're that way. I don't even, whatever. But the advances in tech, though, not, none of our aunts, none of our forefathers, should we just keep using that term today? Absolutely. Ever had, we went from nothing to this in 15 years. Yeah. There was no social, there was nothing, and right. now... You don't even have to leave your couch to do your entire life. No. I everything mean, could be delivered. Like, literally everything except roofing has an easy button. <laughs> <laughs> Hell of a segue. Huh? <laughs> so we've been talking for a couple of years, and you've refer- you've referred me to a couple people for patios and stuff like that. But we've, uh, I mean, we've talked. We only just met in person like two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, we're just way too busy and important to well, be. We live take- online. Yeah, yeah, bro. I'm just kidding. Um, but that was two, three years ago when you started at down this path, this big journey. Yeah. Um, you said you're an, an, an eternal optimist. You obviously live a life that's on the other side of fear. You don't walk around in fear. You're like, you identified this major hole in our industry. And then you've gone about the very arduous task of figuring out how to, to fix that kind of walk us through the, the sa- the safe for ears now version of that because I know yeah. you're not quite to to a launch uh, point yet but this is very exciting stuff yeah we got some skunk works projects still <laughs> under works but uh, <laughs> but yeah squared ash is the name of the product um, and it uh, kind of was born out of frustration in my my own roofing company um, like in 2018 we had a team of like I don't know 12 12 to 15 guys and we ended up spending like close to a little over sixty thousand dollars on software licensing fees trying to you know become a modern roofer right and go paperless and really bring some level of automation and efficiency to the to the operation um without having to rely on finding those quality people which was another mistake you know you got to find quality people right there's no well they don't exist now <laughs> yeah they're 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 not to be found yeah the great resignation exist. right yeah yeah um but uh yeah so like you know we were using you know door-to-door tracking we were using proposal generation we were using crms we we're using roof measurements we we're uh doing direct mail but doing it manually uh, then we found some things online that we thought were going to make it better but it just like did the shotgun blast approach and it was just, it was just a mess, right? It was just a fragmented mess, like this kind of whole industry is. And not that any of these solutions aren't good software, right? Like most of them are really well built and and well made softwares, right? But they only kind of address one pillar of your business, right? And I understand that from a product standpoint, especially having been down the road now of developing a product, um, it's really hard and really expensive to try and do the Swiss Army knife approach, right? But there's also something to be said for um, operability, integration, 
um, flow of data, um, and also implementation, adoption, right? If you're working with eight different tools and you're training green sales reps to come on, they've never even been in this business, they've never been on a roof, not only do you have to teach them about the insurance process, but then you have to teach them about all five, six, seven, eight tools that you use. And, you know, up until maybe a year or two ago, like the integrations weren't there, right? Now the answer to integration is Zapier, which Zapier is great for a lot of things. It's an API connector, yeah. right? Um, but it's not the same as being built in the same platform, in the mm -hmm. same wrapper, right? So we, uh, yeah, we just started picking apart the pieces, the pillars of our business, right? You got marketing, you got sales, you got customer service, um, you got production, accounting, collections, like all these things that um, most roofing companies try and go find people that are good at doing all of those things, which it's not impossible, but it's really tough, right? And, you know, these organizations that have 50, 60, 100 sales reps, like, I got to give it up to them. I don't know what they got going on in there. Yeah. But, like. Y'all are amazing. Y'all are freaking amazing because, that, like, that is, like. Yeah. Like. That looks like a uh, five-gallon bucket of Jack Daniels to me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, for real. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> That's a recipe for complete and total permanent tap out. But, you know, you know, sometimes sometimes organizations and the people within them just come together and they have the right mixture of uh, skill sets and they put it to work and they execute and God bless them, you know, and I, I cheer them on. Me too. From the sidelines. But I, I love uh, seeing people win. Absolutely. I, I, I mean, that's how we even met. Because 100%. We just cheer each other on, right? Yes. We don't even know each other, right? Yep. But like, yep. hey, dude. Get it. Brother out in the Let's field, go. right? Do it. Yeah, while you're pouring your own driveway and putting up your own fence by yourself. And I'm <laughs> yeah. like, you're a much better man than me, Matt. <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Hey, sometimes that tan, you know, it's important. You got to yeah. get out there and get it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. But I'm fascinated by tech development because I have no idea about it. Yeah. And I told you about something that I'm starting to develop. So when you said, we're going to do this, yeah. and you're this, you know, optimist to a fault, were you like, we're going to do this, and we're going to be good to go and live in 18 months? Or were you like, I don't know what's going to happen, I've never done this before, um, and it doesn't matter how long it takes, we're getting to the finish line, and we're going to pull out every stop, and we're going to beg Peter to pay Paul, we're going to do whatever we got to do, is that, was that the... Both. Okay. Yeah. Did it start out as the 18 month yeah. thing? And then about eight days in, you're like, yeah, not going to be 18 months, brother. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It was a little, a little stretched out after that. Right. Like it didn't happen eight days in, it was yeah. a little longer than that, but yeah, I mean, you know, um, one of my partners, Jeremy, who kind of, uh, helped me go down this path cause he's a very tech minded individual. He's also been in the roofing industry for about 15 years. Um, has really deep domain expertise in not only roofing, but also technology, but is not a programmer, right? Well, he wasn't, he is now, he, he taught himself like That's five awesome. programming languages in the last two or three wow. years. Yeah. He's unlike Impressive. anybody I've ever met before. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we came together at the right time. We had the sim similar ideas. People told me I was crazy. People told me like, what are you doing? Like, this is, you know, all the things. Right. And yeah. I just, I drown that out. Right. Good. I, I have, you know, I always have, that means you're on the right track. Yeah. That's what I've found. Yeah. When you have ideas that I don't ever work. Yeah. You're not qualified. Hold my beer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we, uh, we started down the track and we started, uh, we started building an internal tool, right? It, it was never meant to like sell to the public. I think that's so cool. Yeah. It was, it was supposed to be something that just helped our business yeah. so that, because we had a really good hold on how we operated. Right. We didn't know shit about how you know anybody else out in the market was was doing things we learned but um at the time we didn't really know and um we we started on the zoho platform it's a low code no code platform yeah. we thought we could like build and block this thing together and put the legos together but that just didn't work out um that took us about a year to realize and we weren't like raising money or you know seeking outside investment or anything like that this was just something we were working on internally and um yeah, we kept, we re reached the kind of the ceiling of their abilities on the on that platform. We were like, we're gonna have to build this from scratch. Like, we're just there's no way that this is gonna work the way we're thinking it will. And um, Jeremy 
hunkered down and taught himself everything he needed to know to become proficient enough to build our prototypes, build out these proofs of concepts, test them with our people internally, um, and see what little micro actions made big differences and which ones didn't matter, right? Um, those little tweaks that normally you would have to do in a live production environment, right, with real customers and figure that out as you go. We were lucky enough to do it internally and not get blasted on the internet when shit didn't work, you know? <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, we went down that road and uh, just about like last year, uh, the middle of last year, um, we decided to start raising money and start seeking outside investment. Uh, because we got to the point where we had reached a level of proficiency and competency and an understanding of what we actually really needed to do and solidified our roadmap and all that good stuff. Um, and yeah, so we've raised, raised some money. We've got uh, an MVP uh, that is set to hopefully launch here at the end of May, uh, early June. Um, most, of, most of last year was spent on R&D. We... Um, um, we have a parsing algorithm that actually allows uh, contractors or homeowners to uh, upload a PDF version of the scope of work that they get from the insurance carrier. And we can actually uh, parse that document, extract all the meaningful information out of that, leave all the instructional and sample data and policy bullshit in the document and take out all the line items and dollar amounts and then use that to automate as much of their workflow as possible. We've mapped out all the material and labor items that go with remove laminate shingle, replace laminate shingle. But what does that mean? Like what, what material choices do I have? Cause you go Tamco, you're at $60 a square. You go Timberline, you're 105, right? That's a big Delta. And you know, you got a green salesperson. Can you really get heritage for 60 a square? I'm, I'm pulling yeah. out of my ass. Yeah. Whatever. Um, but yeah. So things like that, like mapping, the generalized line items of Xactimate to the actual what goes on an order that goes to ABC, yeah. right? And and what what's getting sent to my crew, right? right. And and automating that down to like a few seconds to where, um, you know, because it took me like a year and a half when I got in this business to be able to see enough scopes on enough jobs to have a big enough sample set in my mind of having seen all the scenarios sure. and like understanding what all these line items mean and like, what is, is this profitable or not? Like, where am I going to have to, you know, pull from to make up for, and you know, you know oh, just yeah. all those things that you have to like make split, split second decisions at the kitchen table on. Will the algorithm pull data off a Symbility document as well? Yeah, we're working on that. I know there's barely anybody using that anymore, but I mean, QBE does and yeah, QBE, QBE pays, pr pays their claims. All right. They do. I actually just, finished one and it yeah. was great it, it, they are. Um, it was awesome yeah. i was like hell yeah it's been a while since i seriously I've... <laughs> them asi yeah pay great i mean you yeah. gotta you gotta work for it but yeah. They'll, they'll yeah the way the way our algorithm works um which we filed a patent on because there wasn't anything out there there's tons of ocr there's tons of document parsers and processors but there's nothing that does it in a way that can account for um the way exactimate you know the way the adjuster has their Xactimate set up and how they're going to output it, right? Because every carrier kind of looks a little different. Yeah. Um, we had to account for that, and there's really no document pro processors out there that yeah. will actually read accurately, you know, a description that lies above all the numbers sure. that also has notes in it, you know, that includes starter and waste and all that crap. Like, that's really hard for a computer to, to meaningfully extract i can't even imagine yeah. there's got to be so many combinations and permutations in that code where you're working around what about i mean i imagine just this topic was was difficult to get around but i, I could be wrong because like i said i'm no tech expert but you get a loss report sometimes and the summaries will be on the first page or it'll be title page summary next some others the summary page is all the way so are you teaching it that too yeah. and does it have the ability to kind of learn and update it so does it have an element of ai to it yeah we haven't put the ai in it yet because uh we're we're building the product around it right we sure. had to get it working it's like i'd say 85 percent accurate on the scopes that we that cool. we've put through it so far because we kind of got it to a certain point where we solidified the methodology and the process behind it filed the patent started building the product around it and as we open it up to beta users they'll start feeding it data and that's when we will 
introduce the AI and, and the machine learning to where it can learn from itself. That's awesome. Would say the supplement department at a restoration company benefit from this as well because you're taking all that needed info out and now they don't have to go retype everything in. It's just boom, it populates a do- an audit estimate or a supplement report. Yeah, that's the idea, that's right? Awesome. So uh, it takes about 400 milliseconds to process it wow. and spit it out. And we have an error checking step where you can check it for errors, especially in these early stages where, you know, because you want that that digital source of truth to be as accurate as possible. Um, and so you, you check it real quick, make sure it came through. If not, you make whatever edits you want. And then, yeah, it, uh, it'll it spit out. Um, you can have uh, like your macro templates that you have set up in, in Xactimate. You can put line item grouping so that if it recognizes, hey, this, uh, you know, wood floor is here, yeah. add the dustless sanding, right? Sure. Um, things like that. So we can automatically suggest line items. You can uh, create new line items, um, and you can, more importantly, map the material and labor costs, like the actual hard costs that go into these line items. You can start tracking those over time to where you know your ROI. It'll spit out an ROI analysis like that. I mean, just just by having your kind of templates and macros set up when you, when you scan it in. But over time, you'll know, um, like, what you should actually be charging. I feel like a lot of people, a lot of contractors use Xactimate as a crutch because they don't know what to charge, right? Yeah, and then they think they're doing good if they got 10 and 10 added. If you run a company on 10 and 10, you're going to be out of business in like fucking you know, like there's, a year. There's a lot of chatter right now, a lot of speakers and, you know, all the conferences, they're talking about lump sum. Lump and, sum, bro. Yeah, it's, that's great. Lump I mean, sum, bro. Lump, lump go, sum bro. it out, you know? I Look, I, I agree with the philosophy with behind the, it. With the concept. <clears throat> Absolutely. Lots of great ideas out there in the world. Yeah. I don't know. End world hunger. <laughs> Bring world peace. Get lump sum estimates approved. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, you know, and just like those 100-man companies, I cheer people that are having success on from the sidelines. But I don't believe them. Yeah. And, you know, that that that's another conversation. But the point I was getting to is, you know, most contractors don't know their true operational costs, right? Fact. They don't track shit. Nope. Right? They get a scope. What's my material? What's my labor? Cool. Send it out. Yep. They don't take into account, you know, Alice in the office. They don't take into account the production manager, the runner, the marketers. What's your lead cost on that? Did you actually make money on that? Or did you spend $700 getting that lead, right? Um, so... You got to start somewhere, right? And you got, and the most logical place for us was start in the job, right? We need to know, like down to the box and nails, yeah. what is our profitability on this job as it sits from the carrier? Because a lot of people just like they're, they're, um, there's this misconception that you have to supplement everything because we just got to get, 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 right? Do you really need to supplement a fifty percent profit job? Like if it's written at fifty percent, I mean. Not if you know your numbers. Not if you know your numbers, right? And not if you're supplementing only to get the number up, right? If you're supplementing because they legitimately left something off, right? That's that's another that's another topic. But you know, we've gotten in this uh, chase our tail rat race with carriers, and it, I think it was intentional, but or maybe it's just a byproduct of Xactimate being such a line item detailed thing. They have all these entry points to argument with us, but we're just trying to get our numbers where they need to be as a business, right? I need to make X amount over what it cost me just to stay in business and like actually run a profitable business. Well, people, I'm generalizing, but a lot of people don't look at insurance claims like that, right? They see what they got. They say, is this a best or worst case scenario? Yeah, let's roll with it, right? And then they don't really have any visibility on their numbers. And they can't really back up their argument. They're like a truffle pig. They're just kind of rooting rooting around, around and they're like, Oh, we hit a lick over here. Let's do it again. Safety harnesses. Like, get out of here, bro. PPE, like, bro. <laughs> Scaffolds. Yeah. You know, and, you know, it, it just, it gives way for arguments to be had between that side of the line and this side of the line. But, you know, all that to say, we really wanted to be able to tell a salesperson that's been in the business for two weeks that a customer gives them a scope, they upload it, they know exactly where they're at and can have an intelligent conversation with their boss or the homeowner or the manager or whoever, and actually, you know, have a little bit of visibility in what they're doing. I remember my first job when I got in this business, 
one of my first jobs. I got the scope. Right. I literally had to go out to the truck, call my manager, email the scope to him, and wait for him to like call me back and be like, "Okay, yeah, you can do this, but like we can't do the fence or what." You know, and I was yeah. just like, "How yeah. many times does that happen?" Right. right? And then that's it, not scalable. That's not scalable, right? And like that's where it comes in. You know, when you are hot, you know, you're running a hundred man operation or whatever, and you're trying to hire ten people a week. You know, how do you train them to be experts in what they do? How do how do you, like? A lot of them don't. And in fairness, maybe that's scalable. Yeah. I just, uh, and that's all. That's that's their business. Um, we know that when the project manager gets to that point of being super knowledgeable, often, and whether they are thinking of this accurately or not, they're thinking, "Well, I'm giving up this much of my commission working here. I can do this myself." They're not taking into account everything you've already mentioned about what it takes to actually run a business that's going to survive long term. What about bid items? Will the will the algorithm Make a suggestion. For instance, collapsed balcony. If Xactimate's not putting an accurate number on restoring that, will it say some? Will it upload that? Or that's going to be not business right, owner? Not right now, okay. right? I mean, yeah. we don't have we don't have enough data behind yeah, it. Yeah, that's to, a really abstract thing to try to teach a machine to learn, isn't it? Yeah, and we can't solve for every case, right? right. But like, if we can get you know ninety percent, ninety five percent, number I was going to throw at you. Yeah, if we can get it ninety percent like relevant. I'm not even going to say, I mean, you can call it accurate. Oh, right? you can but handle like, that last 10 easy. Yeah, easy, right? Like, if I don't have to recreate the whole Xactimate and I just have to literally, like, go in and tweak a couple items or add a couple items and I don't have to, like, sit there for an hour and put in every freaking line item Seriously. and recreate. Like, come on, man. Like, what are we yeah. doing? Like, send me the ESX or, like, right. what are we doing, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and so, yeah, you're doing data entry. You get a VA to data entry that thing for you for, like, $7 an hour. Exactly. And, you and know, you're in here... It's just, it's a bitch, it's a bitch man. It's, it's, <laughs> it's just like, whatever. And, um, you know, it, it, like I said, it gives entry points to a lot of arguments to be had. Like we're arguing over, you know, little nitpicky bullshit that we don't even like, I don't charge somebody for a pipe jack. It goes into my cost for the roof. Right. Right. I don't, I don't break my cost down. So insurance is, they've, they've forced us to start breaking our jobs down in a way that we don't do. I mean, Everything in Xactimate is done by labor hours. Like, yeah, I know, like, up north and in other markets, like, they pay their guys by the hour if they're on staff. But, like, most of the shit subcontracted out by the square. Well, we're not, a, we're <laughs> not an automotive collision repair center here right. either where I've got, you know, 50,000 of the exact same silver Dodge Ram. Yeah. Right? Every house, property, scenario, they're all different. Right. Uh, yeah. You know, it sounds like this is going to fill a lot of needs. There's so many people who want to be in this business. They see the money in it or right. what could be good money. Right. Got to know what you're doing, though, to yeah. make that happen. Be a cash flow ninja. Yeah, for real, <laughs> for real. But they don't have the working knowledge, but they have this entrepreneurial fire, which we, I was, anybody who wants to start their own thing should. That's the American fucking dream. Right. TW, Listen to that podcast. He said 97%. I didn't check his numbers. He's so smart. I wasn't going to lie. I like believe him. He said, Swipe, check this out. See if you can find this. 97% of the workforce is employed by 3% of the workforce. And that 3% are all small business owners. So we're not talking about the people who work at Walmart, Microsoft, Apple, Google, Tesla. Right. We're talking about like all the dudes and gals who work for you and me right. and kurt and tw and all these guys yeah that's that's a crazy stat yeah so you want those guys to be able to be successful though absolutely and they're walking right into the mouth of an alligator because they don't know what the fuck they're doing right. you're talking to the carrier who's a hundred percent a expert on figuring out how to work Not, around you exactly yeah. yeah yeah i mean yeah that's 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 our motivation is to let the most junior guy at the company and the most senior guy at the company have access to the same data and have the same opportunity at running a successful job and delivering a favorable experience for their customer because that's who's going to benefit in the end right and that's that's who we're all out here serving right yes. i mean yeah we love to make money and it's a great business and everything but like I'm only in business because we've taken care of our customers, right? right? Client care, man. I don't do any active marketing anymore. It's 100%. I'm 100% referral. Fucking these days. bragger. Well, God. you know. Yeah. Good for you. That's awesome. I mean, I'm proud of that. That's you know? amazing. I mean, you should be. And, That's amazing. And, 
you know, I don't, I don't have any like. It's the beard. Reserv. <laughs> I just trimmed it. <laughs> I don't have any reservations about like not growing this huge, massive company. We talked about this the other yeah. day. You know, that's for some people. There's some companies that choose not to grow. And like once we got to the point where we um, decided that we were going to, like once we got out of that internal tool building phase and we decided that we were going to do this and release it to the market, um, my energy and my focus and my um, motivation changed to, I don't really care about my roofing company. I'm, I mean, I, I care about it, right? But like, that's not that's not where my legacy is going to lie. I want to solve some really systemic problems on this side of the line of these insurance claims because insurance carriers have unlimited resources, unlimited dollars, unlimited lawyers, unlimited everything to do what they're going to do to be successful. And I feel like there have been people that have tried to bring the industry together and have done a good job in certain regards. But when it comes to like the day-to-day -day operation, I don't need, um, you know, motivational speech to tell me how to run the business because I'm going to forget that when, you know, my margaritas wear off yeah. from the conference, right? No doubt. I need a system that is in my day-to-day -day that does all that shit, yeah. right? And does it all cohesively right. and does it all with the understanding of what we're actually doing and what we're actually up against with these carriers with their unlimited resources, we need access to clean data, right? We need access to yeah. market-wide data. Well, what if we could make all of our project managers 10 times more efficient, and by doing that, we made them even two times more profitable, which 10 times a 10x of efficiency is going to produce way more than a 2x of profitability. I feel like I'm in one of those like middle school word problems. Yeah, yeah. I don't I'm know trying what's to, going on. Trying to, trip up, <laughs> trying to trip up the Navy 20, guy over 20 is the answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah, it would. So you said maybe there's uh, companies who aren't looking to actually actively grow, but this would actually help them grow. Because Absolutely. Because you don't have to bring on more personnel, but you can handle and care for more clients efficiently. And that makes all the sense in the world. At the beginning, when we were talking about how we both envisioned insurance, the insurance industry started. Yeah. You said, uh, you know, I feel like they were altruistically. You just said what you just said. Your passion about this thing is not that it's probably going to have you, you know, moving up income brackets or moving to the California coast. It's helping the industry, helping the yeah. young guys, helping them get started. All that's very altruistic. That's awesome. I mean, it's look, I've experienced a lot of stress and heartache and all the things that come with running a business. What's this, that like? Yeah. <laughs> but I've also seen other people uh, experience that. And I've seen people get into the business and really want to be successful in like, because of all the moving pieces and how they're not tied together, just get burnt out like so quick. And it's, it's a shame because what we do is needed in our communities, right? We put people's homes back together yeah. and, um, it should it shouldn't be this hard, right? It shouldn't be this hard when, you know, you pay your premiums, you expect to be covered, right? But then you're now you're in this like adversarial battle that you didn't ask to be in. Some guy knocked on your door, told you you had damage. Now you're in the middle of this freaking stressful situation where like the contract like the insurance companies telling you they paid enough, contractors telling you you're not, who do you believe? Yada yada yada. If we can back it up with data, like the numbers don't lie, right? If yep. I can show you like, hey, this is this is where we're at. Like, we're in business to make profit, right? Yep. I need to be in business to service your warranty and be around when you call me in yep. five years when another storm comes through. Um, they're not, they didn't pay enough, and I can prove it with our material prices, and I can back it up with data that they're using, and I can show you, like, you know, there's there's conversations that can be had um, that, you know, just we can't really – it's it's hard to make that argument now. Yeah, and there's an oversimplification now going around of – Hey, just, uh, you know, get in front of the client, make them like you, tell them their carrier sucks, and we're going to handle everything. Just sign right here, which that approach no longer works at all. Yeah. The fix it, forget it. You'll never have to talk to your carrier. You'll never have to be involved. Things very rarely works. Um, yeah, it's awesome, man. Yeah. And that's just kind of one aspect of what we've been building. Yeah, there's um, a lot of layers to it. There's a lot of layers because we are building an end-to-end -end platform, right? We're, we're building something that kind of – checks all the boxes of what you need to run a business in this type of environment. It'll work for retail roofers. Absolutely. You just 
turn a couple yeah. things off and you don't need to deal with the claim module right awesome um but uh there's just there's a lot of moving pieces to it it takes a long time there's nothing fast in software um not if you're building it for business owners right yeah. it needs to work and it needs to be valuable and it, it can't yeah you know it can't be like test test driving you know yeah. it, it needs to like actually work you yeah. know so what did um when that bat got that virus and then everything got crazy what did that do to your efforts of developing this nothing really um you're not even gonna laugh at that <laughs> <laughs> the bat, yeah, that was funny. Um, nothing really. I mean, it. it uh, honestly, we got busier, you know, in the roofing company. I know that you asked about the software, but like we got busier in the roofing company because everybody was home. Yeah. Um, and um, nothing really changed for us. Like we didn't really stay home. Like we were just. I mean, we did for the those two weeks, you know, where everybody was freaked out. Did then, you? Yeah. I mean, yeah. My wife works at a salon. Our kids were kicked uh, out of school. We had the newborn. Had to. You know. You know. We we had a. We had to hunker down for a minute, but like I was still going out and like, yeah. you know, doing what I needed to do right. during the day, but I just wasn't like going into the office. Yeah. And then after like a week or so, I was like, You're looking around. I was looking around. I was like, Nah, this is bullshit. Come like, on, this, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. Like, they, they got, they already got celebrity commercials on the TV. Like, what? <laughs> is this a PSA? Like, what, what is happening right now? Is, so, yeah, it, it started getting a little squirrely and, and we went back to business as usual. And, uh, um, yeah, it, it it got a little crazy there with homeowners for a minute, yeah. but like that, it it was short lived, right? Yeah. Like people are home, the shit's leaking, they want it fixed, right? right? They don't care, yeah. Right? Like just don't come in my house, right? That's right. And uh, didn't want to anyway. So we're yeah, exactly. Go. I'd yeah. rather not ever come in yeah. your house. Hundred <laughs> like, percent. Um, but uh, as far as the development goes, like it was just business as usual because we're yeah. a distributed team anyway. Like Very cool. um, our lead developers in Nigeria, our design teams in Indonesia. Um, our front end development team is out of Portugal. Uh, we're bringing another, uh, person on, uh, that's in India. So we, <laughs> we yeah. operate across like too many time zones. Yeah. Like every time zone imaginable. Yeah. And then we, and then we have our core team that's here, uh, in the DFW area. Yeah. So, yeah. That's awesome. When you, uh, so you transitioned from that, uh, the medical sales yeah. over to the restoration industry. What, what attracted you to it? Um, you knew somebody in it. That's what got you kicked off, sort of. I when I first moved to DFW, when I moved to Denton back in whatever year that was, two thousand nine, somewhere in there. Um, my first job was at a roofing company. Okay, and it was just a bunch of boneheads that were making too much money, not doing anything right. And I could just tell, you know, something. I was like, this is lots of pretty trucks in the parking lots lot. Lots of cool trucks. Lots of cool parties. So cool. Lots of cool stories and shit. But like Rolex was, parties. I never got a Rolex. No, uh, I didn't. I didn't work there very long. I, I worked there for about six months, and at the time, I was driving a Honda Accord, Hell with yeah. no AC and leather seats, black leather seats, middle of summer, <laughs> knocking on doors, like already soaking wet before I even got to the door. Absolutely. I was like, this is terrible. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I uh, I'm a third generation contractor. My dad was a ah. uh, industrial concrete contractor. Sweet. My uh, his dad built bridges and roads. So I just come from that you know, line of contractors. And, um, my dad was self-employed. So I've just always had that entrepreneurial spirit yeah. where, you know, if someone's not doing something I like, I'm just like, I can do it. I'm out I can, here. I, I'm out. I'll do this yeah. myself. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah, do this yeah. better. Right. And did you, were you able to, did you pick anything up there that you were able to then take with you? Or was it more of like, oh, okay, I just learned everything I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Uh, you know, th hey, sometimes that's more valuable. It is. You know, I ask everybody who comes on here about mentors and shit yeah. like that. Sometimes that anti mentor is better than an actual mentor. Yeah, I I understood. You know, I under already understood some things about you know how homes fit together and how yeah. things work, how ventilation works, and you know when they were telling us to sell ridge vent as an upgrade on every single deal, mm. I was like, well, on a hip roof. What too? if they have like gable vents or yeah. like what if it's like. Like you know, a two foot ridge. Like, yeah, like what if there's no yeah. ridge on the? Yeah. Like, what do you do? And he was like, "Well, you you can fit a four foot piece up there." <laughs> so and there's stuff like that, yeah, you know, yeah. like just and I, and before I got here, I came from a very high pressure uh, over the phone sales world, selling precious metals and rare coins, uh, and which is a whole another some, life. Some uh, some boiler room Wolf of Wall Street Absolutely, shit right man. there. Talk about a grind. Going to change your life. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Grab a pencil. Yeah. I'll hold on. <laughs> uh, yeah. Boy, so, that's some good experience, though. Uh, it really was. Talk and about learning actually, not to be afraid of the word no. Oh, man. You know. You just get hung up on like all day, times every day, oh, all day, every day, and it was, and, and it literally was like, man, it was so surreal. Like looking back on it, um, it was a campus that was like this big Z-shaped building, and they had like I don't know eight or nine companies that were in you know different rooms in this building that they had built, right? Huh. And um, they were all named something different, you know. I'm not going to say the names, yeah. but they were all very similar. This reserve and that reserve right. and, you know, yes. whatever. So um, Cool names, abstract names. Yeah, for sure. Yes, but they yes. all, you know, advertised in similar publications and whatever. But they all had different, like, markups on, on the coins. And, you know, we all had, like, daily goals, monthly goals sure. that we had to hit as a room. And, you know, you would burn for 45 minutes. You'd be on the phone for 45 minutes. You'd get 15 minutes to go play ping pong or whatever, go take a smoke break. Huh. And then you got to get back on the phones. And when one room would hit their goal for the day, they would be deployed to another room to go cause a ruckus and just like be hype men for the the guys that were on the phone that haven't hit their goal. And when you haven't hit your goal and you're trying, you got some asshole that's like screaming into your phone, like, come on, let's go. You're just like, it's so demotivating. Like, I bet. like it probably works for like three people in the room that I'd are just take like, that headset off and just knock somebody out came close a couple yeah, times I bet yeah you did, man. <laughs> i would just get under my cubicle yeah. and just like hide from uh, Dude, but yeah no. it would, but uh not to get off on a tangent but uh really good sales trainers from a psych- psychological st- standpoint um just understanding human psychology and um you know how that translates into sales and understanding the power that you can wield by understanding that but um not really loving the industry I was in, yeah. right? And so then I started looking for other ways to deploy those skills in businesses that I thought actually were, like, valuable in sure. the world. And, uh, yeah, uh, somehow landed into roofing. Interesting. And, yeah, and it was my way into contracting, Yeah, like, my forefathers. Your forefathers. <laughs> Did you start out on your own? Did you start selling some deals? No, I worked for a couple of companies. Even I actually started a company. After I worked for that first company, I started an LLC, right? I started what would become roof market was Fruge enterprises at the time because I was just doing like handyman work and sure. you know, this and that good for you. Um, and that got sidelined with the medical sales thing, got into that for a few years, got out of that, worked for a couple of companies, same kind of thing. Didn't really like what they had going on there. I'm not really, a, uh, you know, I'm not a fan of authority. And so, uh, yeah, I just struck out on my own and probably in like, uh, 2000, 16 early part of 2016 is I'm not a really... fan of authority <laughs> let's let's title the, this episode of the podcast I'm not a fan of authority neither am I man there you go man I knew there was something about you I liked <laughs> there you my go. poor parents my poor parents yeah I gave them hell boy yeah I have a real problem with authority too which I guess that's why the fight fighting carriers I just I'm like I can't do this again and then I'm like oh yeah Really? Really? Yeah. Oh, that's how we're doing. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll throw it down. That's awesome. When you went and started Roof Mark, you started hiring people. Yeah. Did you ever make this mistake, which I have made many yes. times and no longer made? I don't know what it is, but I made it. <laughs> which is, damn, that person's talented. Oh, yeah. But that attitude's horrible. But I can change. if them. they get around me, my positivity, they're going to turn into a cool person and then you just figure out that that's just not how things work did you did that did you have to fight through that yeah i actually had to remove myself from the hiring process dude i've done that 100 percent. yeah wow do you still are you still not involved with um not really uh because i'm not hiring anybody at my roofing company uh but um from the developer like when we hire developers yeah um i always have my lead developer and usually my product manager uh on the call with me and my purpose on those calls is just to give them the 10,000 foot overview of what we're building, see if it's interesting to them, let them tell a little bit about themselves. And then I, I turn it over to those guys to ask technical questions so that they can get a read on it. And then immediately after we get off the call, we powwow and we say, okay, what'd you think? And it's a thumbs up or thumbs down and reasons why and all that stuff. And it's things that a lot of times, like there's been several times where if I would have been in charge of hiring that person, it would have been the wrong. It would have been the wrong person because they were like, I was like, man, that guy was awesome because I liked his energy, right? Sure. I'm a big energy yes. and vibe kind of yes. person, right? And uh, 
they were like, yeah, but he 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 was totally reading that answer off Google. Like, ah, he, he, really? Yeah, like I was looking at the answer that he was reading me oh on my Google. Gosh. And I'm like, ah, see, that's why I have you yeah, on the call. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I've made that mistake. The yeah. power of uh, collaboration. Yeah, so important. You're still the captain of the ship, so sure. you're like, oh, iceberg, we're going that way. Yeah, right, but. Man, uh, having good people around you is so difficult. You said uh, about 30, 40 minutes ago that when you first got started, you weren't bringing on good people. Yeah. And then I made the joke about there aren't any left. Yeah. Uh, what? When did when did that start to change? Or was it more of like, a, I think I can do this all myself, and I always have done everything myself, so I'm going to try to do this myself. And then you're like, fuck, this is a lot of work. I can't. Yeah. I can't work 24-7. Yeah, no, I actually... Even when we had people that we were hiring, like they kind of all came through um, the people we had in our organization. And when you start off with the wrong people in your organization and then you start attracting their network yes. of people, you kind of get like an exponential return on the bad, right? Yeah, and you're yeah, just yeah. Like, Damn, how did I end up with all these shitheads? In it's my so company? amazing how those people, the birds flock of a together. feather flock yeah. together things. Yeah. Nothing, like there's no truer. Like what? What would you call that? A colloquialism? There's yeah. not a truer saying than that. Yeah. And you, true. and when you're young, you're like, nah. You know, everyone's a good person. Maybe they make mistakes. No, bro. Yeah. Like the uh, the real pandemic is laziness and victim. This victim mentality that's just fucking rampant. Yeah. Yes. The I hire this person. They're not great. I think I can switch them up. And then they're like, hey, I got a buddy. He wants to bring it. Let's do it. Yeah. And I got two people to fix. That becomes four. That becomes eight. And then all of a sudden you're running a full-time HR company. Babysitting club. You know, you're just like, man, this is way too much work for, yeah. you know. And drama. Yeah. So we went, we went through that. And then finally I had to get some quality people in there and start attracting people through that network. And it, it worked out pretty good. But, um, um, but yeah, finding finding good quality people is is tough. You and said that you're attracted to people's energy. I am too. What do you do for yourself that doesn't have shit to do with business, but has everything to do with business to take care of you? Man, that's interesting topic. I actually just did another podcast with my uh, my buddy Dean. Text and connection stuff. That's yeah, it. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, uh, yeah. And we were talking about self care. We were talking about yeah. meaningful male relationships before uh, that. And then that kind of segued into uh, another episode where we actually brought a licensed therapist on that's uh, the wife of a, a friend of his. I got to check um, that out. Yeah, it was a good episode. The audio got kind of messed up because uh, we didn't do an op check. We're in a fancy studio like this, right? Swite, doing... how's our audio, bro? <laughs> Is it good? But uh, it was really good. Con if you if you listen to the um, like really the Spotify the version, yeah. don't do the YouTube. It's the, the echo is bad, but... Uh, the the Spotify version I will. Is, is good. It's good. Awesome. It's good content. Oh gosh, I'm just kidding. Yeah, the audio is good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've made this mistake with two other guests. Yeah. As a team. Yeah. We win as a team. We lose as a team. That's right. End of a two hour podcast, and we forgot to turn the audio on. Yeah. Which then I'm like, so thanks for coming on the podcast. <laughs> We have to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> One of them was a rugby buddy. He was like, "Are you fucking? You did this on purpose." I know you did. I was like, "Bro, no, oh. I didn't. I even brought. Why well, even bring waters? Why would I not? Uh, yeah, yeah. What the fuck. Yeah, no. My buddy Dean, he's a command master chief over in Japan, um, and he uh, is not an audio visual, you know, yeah, expert, right? But like, he's doing the damn thing. He just decided to do it That's about it a takes. month and a half ago. Cool. And uh, I love it. He, uh, it's called the Rising Sun. Y'all should check it out. He's been in the Navy for 20 years. We actually joined together. Yeah, he stayed that's in so cool. and just made a, an incredible career. He's got a beautiful wife and three beautiful daughters. Uh, that they is live way in better than an ugly wife. Yeah, definitely. Um, but and uh, yeah, they they met right after he got to Japan, and cool. yeah, they've been together for like 18 or 19 years. That's but, all, yeah, I'm glad he, he's doing that. Yeah, he you know he's you know he's getting he's 20 21 years in now, and uh, just reenlisted the other day, which oh, was wow. really cool. He did it on a CH 47 on a Chinook, wow. uh, a, a Japanese Chinook. At really? That. Yeah, it was a. That's cool. Yeah, That's it was. Legit. It was cool. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think he decided like he's kind of getting towards the end of his career. Or, you know, creeping up on it. And he wanted to kind of, like, start opening up doors for himself. And he'd been wanting to do this for a long time. And he's in Masawa. He's, like, eight hours away from his family. So he's just kind of, like, up oh. there. 
you know, doing this all alone. He's like, this is the perfect time. Like, if there's ever a perfect time to do it, it's now. So, yeah, it's been cool to be a part of it. I bet. And we've always kind of, you know, we've been best friends for 20-something years. Yeah. And uh, we've always kind of wondered, like, how we were going to work together on something. Sure. And uh, this kind of started up, uh, and he asked me if I'd be kind of the guest, the guest, uh, you know, you know, pop in every week yeah. and do the Texan Connection, which also segued into – this uh, veterans benefit that yes. I that I told you about. Yeah, yeah. So let's do that. Let's talk about that veterans benefit because that's awesome. But what do you do? You like you work out? You meditate? Oh yeah, you asked in me the a like in the mo- answer. What do you do in the morning? Uh, do you, do, is it eyes open, straight on the phone? Don't close your eyes till fourteen hours later. Uh, it depends. Uh, I've been trying to uh, take more time. Shit's and hard, r- isn't it? It is. I, you know, I read my Bible and and just try and spend some time with God in the morning. And then cool. I, I'm not perfect on that, right? Like I get sucked into the Facebook and and you know reading the emails that came in from our team from oh, yeah. across the world while I was sleeping. Sure. You know, uh, there's a lot of catch up sometimes that has to happen. So sometimes it's straight to work, but I typically wake up uh, around 5:30 or six, which is about an hour, hour and a half before anybody else in the house gets up. So I kind of have like some quiet time to just like not, you know, I'm an introvert by nature, right? I, I thrive on alone time because I, I grew up an only child and, you know, gotcha. just, I'm, that's just my, that's that my... explains why you're so fucking spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> no. Yeah, no. I mean, yeah, it's, there's <sighs> definitely, definitely some elements of that, but uh, I embrace it. Contractor dad, he's probably whooping your ass all the time. <laughs> yeah, son. <laughs> We're yeah. shoveling mud today, boy. Let's go. Oh man, I got a list for you. I got a pro- that's that was his famous last words. Uh, not last words. He's still alive, but uh, I got a project for you today. Uh, I your, left. You, I got a list on the counter. Your dad and mine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Projects. It always included uh, pulling weeds on this massive bank behind Dude. our house because I grew up in Washington. Yeah. And and I I it that ruined me on weed pulling forever. I was yeah. like, "Nah, this is not Ours were sticks and rocks." Oh yeah. Out of fields and shit. So we lived in a country acre setting, you know. Where'd he, you grow up? Uh in Beaumont, in Beaumont, Texas. That's right. Yeah. So we lived in like this country acre estate type neighborhood where everybody lived on like one or two acres, right? And backed up against the piney woods. So we had like trees all Very in the cool. back and uh you know, he just brush hogged it, right? Like he didn't, like, he didn't fucking mow, right? Like there was no lawnmower going back there, yeah. but like I'd have to pick up sticks back there from falling limbs and crap. And I'm like, dude, these are all rot. Like he's like, you missed that one. We're talking like a yeah. four. I'm like, come on, man. Like what? What are we doing here? Japanese Zen exercises? You like gotta have those the stern, <laughs> the stern father that teaches work ethic. Yeah. Like there's nothing more valuable than that. There's not. And like growing up, I was like, dude, come on. Yeah. And now I'm like, now I'm my thanks, dad. Man. I'm like, I turned yes. into my dad. I'm like, how the hell did that happen? Yes. Yeah. You turned into your dad. That's <laughs> funny. I didn't. My, me and my dad are still quite different, but there's definitely a lot of. Do you get along? Uh, oh, yeah. 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 yeah cool. For sure. Uh, he, he, <laughs> he just bought 30 acres in the country. He's like 74 years old. Yeah. He's got cows. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, dad? Got to get that but tax break. He's just, he never stops, right? Like, sure. He's still pouring concrete. They just poured a slab for his hay barn. Like Good for he him. formed it up himself. Him and his this guy Dennis that's been working with him for like fifty years, forty years. I don't know. Like they've, it's. it's I love it. It's like a it's a storybook romance. Well, don't you think the value <laughs> storybook <laughs> romance? Well, don't you think sorry, the value? Dad. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Matt's dad. Don't you think the value of uh, hard work? It it's no, no very few. Uh, it seems like it's lost. Oh, 100%. And it seems like uh, the people who I encounter who I do not perceive to be hard workers because I observe their behavior, it just doesn't seem like they've ever even tried it. Yeah. Like when you're growing up and your mom's like, hey, eat that broccoli. No, I don't like it. Have you even tried it? Right. Have you even tried one day just working your tail off? Yeah. It's so – we're built for it. That's yeah. why it feels so good at the end of the day to be like, I'm tired. What is it, what does it say in the Proverbs? The rest of the working man is sweet. Yeah. I mean, it says that for a reason. Yeah. That's a lot of there's a lot of wisdom in that. Yeah. Work your tail off, earn your sleep. That's a pretty sustainable recipe for a happy life. Yeah. Could be. Or you could burn yourself out, right? That's where the balance comes in. That's where the meditating or the um the self-care stuff is important. Yeah. 
We talked about that the other day on that podcast. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the Amanda, the therapist that was that was with us on that, uh, talked about harmony versus balance, right? Finding those little micro actions throughout your day where you, you know, you go walk around the building or you whatever, do some push ups or you read a book or you listen to a podcast or you just check out for a minute, right? Yeah. Or uh, just do something that's non related to what you should be doing, right? Um, it should flow, right? You shouldn't be giving up something to do something else, sure. right? You shouldn't feel bad about, oh, I'm not working because I need to go take my walk around the building. Like, it should just be part of your day. And if it's yeah. not, you need to reevaluate, like, you know, how you're approaching those mentally, right? And, and, um, what you're placing value on between the two things, right? And, and why one is important or not important and why you should or shouldn't be doing that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas balance feels more like force more than flow. Sure. And interesting. Yeah. Balance feels like you're taking from something to balance the scales over here. Whereas harmony is just like, you're trying to just, just make it work. Right. It's like it's you're just flow. going with the river. Right. And then some days like your self care moments, your, your me time just won't happen. Right. It just, it's fine. But you don't beat yourself up for you that. You don't beat yourself up about it because as long as you're intentional and you're mindful, I think mind, mindfulness is the key that a lot of people – I feel – I'm sure you've probably experienced this too because you seem a pretty connected individual with, with other people, their vibe and their energy. Like, Does it feel like – do you ever feel like other people aren't very mindful like going throughout their day? They're just kind of like bebopping around. Yes. And like, yeah. I, I say to uh, friends and and, and, and – uh, like my upper management, like I, I don't know how that person gets through life. Right. Yeah. But they bebop do. bop around. Yeah, they bebop. They they bounce into that mistake and right. into that bad thing that happened to them. Right. Bad but, things happen to everyone, but yes. But I think mindful practicing is is very important. An in awareness. It, in, in achieving harmony yes. and balance or whatever woo-woo words you right. want to use. You know? <laughs> yeah. But All that new age stuff. Yeah, yeah but it's that important. Works. You know? 100% it is. Yeah. 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 Um, Speaking of mindfulness, giving back, that topic's come up. Uh, the giving back, the altruism, the uh, the benefit concert that we talked about at the beginning, uh, That's we're shooting for November for that, and who's it going to benefit? Uh, yeah, so... And can I play a solo? We can make that happen. Just cowbell, like Will Ferrell. More cowbell. More, bitch. <laughs> I got a fever. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Just me up there going yeah. crazy. I'm going to wear a shirt. Get a little fatter, so there the shirt go. rides up, and I go. think I'll be a hit. Yeah. 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 Hell yeah. Let's okay. make it happen. Okay. Sweet. All right. I'm in. Done. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So uh, my ABC rep, uh, Andrew Marshall. Um, That's my brother's name. That's crazy. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, we, Andrew I, Marshalls, they're good people. They are. I yeah. love Andrew. He's a great guy. Um, and, you know, we started... Kind of just spitballing an idea. I think it stemmed from a video I posted of me making chili, and TJ Ware had been making chili in another video that cool. he posted. And we kind of like in the comments of the Facebook post were like, "Yeah, we should have a chili cook-off." And me and Andrew started talking. This was like last year, and uh, me and Andrew started talking, and we were like, "We should definitely put like a chili, See, like a chili cook-off." You on. think you're an introvert? <laughs> you ain't no damn intro. Plus, you were at South by Southwest like two, well, three weeks ago. No, I didn't end up making it down. Oh. But, um, but no, introverts, someone who like they recharge yeah. by being themselves. Yes. Like it's, it, I, I can talk in front of anybody. Well, you know, and that is, that, that's but. a that's like a different type. Someone was ta- talking saying that the other day. That's a different type of introvert where you actually do get energy when you go talk to people. Sure. But you have to then go. It takes a lot out of you. You have to then go recharge. Yeah. Yeah. Who's this going to benefit, this event? Yeah, this so it's cook-off. called the, the Dirty Boots Music Fest and Chili Cook-Off, and we're planning it uh, for November 19th is the date we're shooting for. We're trying to do it on Veterans Day, but the venue, uh, Panther Island, that we're going after was taken that day for a blues festival. Gotcha. So, but November is you know, Military Appreciation Absolutely. Month, so we can make it work. And it's the weekend before Thanksgiving, so Dude, wow. everybody will be home. You know, yeah, a so. little cooler, yeah, too. Yeah, perfect chili weather. That's awesome. So we're... Uh, we're opening up to the contracting community at large, awesome. right? We put it out in the roof, roofing Facebook messaging groups and all that stuff. Had a really good response. Um, we're going to raise money through Chili Cook-Off entries, and then we're going to have a an, an incredible lineup of musical talent. Awesome. I, I can't really name names because we haven't secured any contracts, but like, I think like, Cody Johnson, Midland, Ooh. like like yeah. a real concert, right? Like That's not awesome. Not like you know your 
pastor party hoedown. Right? Yes, we're, yes. We're, we that wanna, venue deserves a yeah deserves I mean, good talent. That's yeah, a great you gotta venue. bring you gotta you gotta be able to bring a crowd just to be able to rent the place. So yeah, um, yeah, we're in the early stages of of doing that, but uh, we uh, have formed a nonprofit uh, called the Freedom Contract, which is our. Uh, our mission revolves around the social contract that we have with veterans who literally sacrifice their lives to uh, ensure that we enjoy the freedoms and, and the lives that we get to live um, and how we can give back to them. And, you know, being from the roofing and contracting community, we can start by fixing veterans' homes. And I know there's a lot of nonprofits and charities that do similar things, but that's what we're raising money for is to go back to veterans and kind of bring the blue collar trades and veterans together um, under one common cause. That's so awesome, so, man. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we'll do whatever we can can do to help you promote it. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm personal friends with Eddie Vetter. There you go. So if you want Pearl Jam, just let me know. I'll shoot him a text. <laughs> He'll shoot right down from, or just him with the ukulele. There you go. He'd probably be fine with that. I'm not. I wish I was. My yeah. sister is, but I don't think he's. I don't think he's doing <laughs> shit like that right now. That's very cool. Yeah, it, we're That's excited a big about it. It is a big undertaking. I brought in a management company, the same people that put on ACL. Float Fest, Freedom Fest, a lot of other big festivals. I don't have time to plan a music festival. I was going to say. My wife thought I was freaking nuts. Yeah. She was like, what are you talking about? Hold on. She was like, look, I'm 100% behind this cause, but like, are you serious right now? <laughs> You're going to build our fence yourself. You're trying to run a roofing and restoration company. You're starting a tech company, yeah. and you're going to put together a concert. You, my friend, I don't know. <laughs> Your mitochondria, they're they're firing. You've they got are. This, uh, you've got this energy, <laughs> this endless energy, man. Yeah, um, it's awesome. You know, I just uh, it it was a it was an idea that was just born out of you know yeah. a random conversation. But then I really started thinking back. You know, my right when I got out of the Navy, uh, I was back in Beaumont, and I actually was involved with a concert prov- promoter that booked country Texas country bands uh at all the clubs in Beaumont and you know Kevin Fowler and just all the names in Texas country so I see what I've seen what goes into organizing events I have connections in that world still um I also you know after being in contracting for 11 or 12 years now you know I know a lot of people in the contracting space this is a relationship business um we're trying to get you know abc on as a as a sponsor i'm just gonna put that out there come on abc come on ABC. let's go andrew yeah and uh you know we, we really want to bring the, the community together around roofing and contracting um because most of the people in our business are like you and me right they're good dudes they're family guys mm-hmm. they're running a clean business they're they're doing what they got to do and for whatever reason you know there's a connotation or a stigma around our our industry um that's not great right yeah. and so i just felt like it was the perfect time to bring together all the random people that i've met across sure. the years that uh could literally pick up the phone and make this happen and it worked out with about three phone calls and an email that's awesome it just kind of manifested that's itself a, that so. means it's supposed that's mean it that means it's meant to be yeah we're excited about it the the power of collaboration which we've talked about and coalescing with other people who have similar beliefs but also goals and values is i think that's one really cool thing about networking with other contractors because when you're out there on your own you can feel really isolated hell i did for like the first 10 years it was just me i had a bookkeeper but i was doing everything and and i would just i had some dark times man people don't pay you or you're pulling out of your retirement to make payroll i mean these are the very real literally whole life savings going into keeping the business alive Again, what's that like? Twice. What's that like? <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's very awesome. I really uh, appreciate you meeting me the other day. I'm stoked about your about your your startup. It's going to really change things. Thanks, it really man. is. And I really appreciate your time. Yeah, man. And I appreciate I thank you, you for having your me service. on. Service absolutely. Thanks. Let us know what we can do to help promo that benefit, and we'll do it. Yeah. As we get more, uh, as it fleshes itself out, and we get further down the road, we'll uh, we'll we'll be back in touch on it. Clutch. Matt Fruget, everybody. Well, that was awesome. I knew it would be. Matt's a really cool guy. Great energy. And he's got great experience and great insight as well. Um, always enjoy my conversations with Matt. And we've always we've been pulling for each other for about three years since we met uh, on social media. So having him on the podcast, something I've wanted to do for a while. And I hope you enjoyed it. I most definitely did. I really like doing the podcasts. 
I hope you do too. Love to know what you think about them. Feel free to dot, drop a comment below. Uh, hit me anytime on Instagram at Jess from the Northwest. Or if you'd like to work together, shoot me an email at live at autographconstruction.com. And remember, 